By 1952, India had played 23 test matches with England, Australia and West Indies, but had never won a single match. So when the England team toured India for a five-match test series, confidence wasn't at an all-time high. After the first three test matches were drawn and the fourth test won by England, the selectors decided to make five changes. They left out Vijay Manjarekar, CS Naidu, Sadhu Shinde, Nana Joshi and Hemu Adhikari and brought in Lala Amarnath, Mushtaq Ali, CD Gopinath, Ramesh Divecha and Probir Sen for the fifth and final test at Madras. Donald Carr, the England captain, won the toss and elected to bat. Dattu Padke gave India the early breakthrough, but Dick Spooner and Tom Graveney added 68 before Vinu Mankad struck. 60 more runs were added and England looked comfortable. It was then that Vijay Hazare, the captain, removed Spooner. Even then, England looked in control of the match at 174 for 3. Mankad took two more wickets and England reached 224 for 5 at stumps, with Jack Robertson holding forth with a gritty performance. During the afternoon, news came in that King George VI had passed away and the next day was hastily declared a rest day. As play got underway after a day's break, Mankat cast his spell on the English batsman. His minimalistic three-step run-up, his subtle variations in flight and supreme control over the amount of spin soon had the English batsman reeling. Jack Robertson and Donald Carr offered some resistance, but once Mankat removed Robertson, the floodgates opened. Mankad ran through the side and returned figures of 8 for 55. From 244 for 5, England were bowled out for 266. When India began their innings, Pankaj Roy held the innings together with his supreme concentration. When Roy finally fell, he had scored 111 out of a team score of 191. After the fall of 5 wickets in the Indian winnings, Dwindling outwalked the tall, broad-shouldered Pauli Umrigar to join Dattu Padkar. He had been demoted to number 7 due to his poor form and he had to prove the selectors wrong. As Fadkar began to exert himself on the English attack, Umrigar also slowly began to open up. Once he regained his touch, Umrigar began to take charge. He went neck to neck with Fadkar. Soon the English total was overcome and the batsmen remained together as India approached 300. By the time Fadkar was out, the lead had crossed 50. Now with Gopinath for company, Umrigar began to flow and took India over the 400 mark. With a few overs left in the day, Hazare decided to declare on 457 for 9 with Umrigar on an unbeaten 130. The next day saw yet another display of spin bowling from Mankad, this time supported capably by Gulam Ahmed. Mankad took 4 for 53 and Gulam 4 for 77 to bowl out England for 186, resulting in a victory by an innings and 8 runs. It was a historic moment. It had taken India 20 years to register their first victory and the 11 players realized they had pulled off something special. The spectators went berserk and gave the Indians a standing ovation. But there was no cash reward announced for the men who had created history. They had to be content with their match fees of rupees 250 each. I hope you like this video about the first ever test match win by India. And if you did, please smash a like and share it with your friends and family. And keep watching Indian Cricket Highlights.